Hello, my name is Ben Griggs and welcome to the Getting Started with Shapeshifter training series. This is part one of probably four parts. Today we're going to be making this simple text animation using Adobe uh, text animation presets along with Shapeshifter as well as taking a look at some of the different file types that Shapeshifter works well with. So let's jump right in and create a new composition. This is 1280 by 720. In our project settings, we want to be sure that we're at 16 bits per channel or higher. And in our new comp window here, let's create a text layer with just some sample text. Let's apply Shapeshifter to this. And you can immediately see a bit of extrusion. With no camera or lights, it's a little bit dull. So let's add a new camera as well as some new lights. Let's have a parallel light. This is red at 95 percent. I'm going to have another parallel light that's blue. Maybe not that dark. Okay. And finally, an ambient light. It's around 15 percent and white. Let me turn on some shadows here. And now, let's grab our camera, swing around to the side. We want to move one of our parallel lights, not the mesh itself. Move the parallel light. Uh, you don't actually need to move parallel lights. They only rely on which direction they're pointed, because they are infinite lights. I just like to move parallel lights for reference so that you can see a little bit better what's actually going on. And now we have some nice blue and red, maybe a little purplish where they combine, and nothing super dark. So there's a nice lighting for um, an animation, but there's nothing going on yet. Let's add a text preset. I'm using one called Climber. There are a lot of the text presets that work out well with Shapeshifter. Just play around with them and see which ones are working for you, especially the animate in and outs. So there we go. We've got that simple animation set up already. Really didn't take much effort at all. One thing I want to show you very quickly, uh, which we'll go into more detail tomorrow, you see right here at the top of the M and maybe a touch on the E or X, there's a little bit of a closed in where it should be a gap. This has to do with our displacement mapping. I'm going to change this to a point two right now and you can see immediately the uh, the effect that that had. I'm going to be going into more detail with this in the next tutorial which deals with when should you pre-comp your asset and uh, and more about the displacement maps, how they work and all that. So with this applied and the animation already there of course we can grab the camera, move around and you know, just change the angle. We could be working with some transparencies in these letters. It's going to make it look really neat. But let's move on and look at the other types of files that can be used with Shapeshifter. I believe that's a good starting point with the text. Now here in the image samples, I have first, this is a rather organic looking piece. And as we scroll through, you'll see it just melds around. This is actually a fractal noise. You see we do have some transparent areas in the fractal noise. This is a noise layer that's overlaid on a white solid with a Luma track map. And when we have a background, you can see what is solid and what is transparent here. Back over into our sample comp, what we have here is a contour. The contour is measuring an alpha level. So anything on the alpha noise that is 50% solid or more is being extruded and we can change that by moving this around. This works, uh, this is something you would generally mess around with on more organic shapes. For more technical shapes, that's probably not anything that you need to touch. So we'll get into that in a little more detail again on the next tutorial where we deal with uh, displacement mapping and when to pre-comp. But there we go, just as simple, anything with an alpha is going to work great with um, Shapeshifter. Let's look at some of the other options we have here. This is a shape layer. The shape layer is simply animated. Let me turn the effect off. There we go. The 
it's very simply animated, changes colors from yellow to red. Uh, the, the ends get curvy, it twists. A very basic shape layer. But once we apply shape shifter to this, of course we need to have some good lights in here, you can see this nice extrusion and as it animates, this extrusion is still there. It just works well with anything with this alpha. Let's keep moving on. Here we have a white solid. Now this white solid simply has a few masks applied. Now these masks, just like any, any masks in After Effects, it could be drawn here or it could be pasted in from a different program. And being masked, they can be animated and adjusted just like any other mask in After Effects. And of course, this is all very quick, very live, and you can do just about anything there. Another example I have here is a PNG. A PNG file with an alpha included. I believe that's a 32-bit PNG file. This is not the ideal asset. If you get the right scale, the right size, then you can do some really nice stuff with a PNG. Generally, we want to stick with uh, vector graphics, either masks or shapes, anything that has these, uh, these collapse transformation options. Next, we have an EPS file. And these next three are basically the same. We have EPS, Adobe Illustrator, and PDF files. These are all vector images that can be saved out of Illustrator or brought in from pretty much anywhere. Uh, one thing that I've noticed you can't bring in After Effects at all, as far as I know, are SVG files. But SVG files are very popular online. You'll see a lot of them on uh, like Wikipedia and places that you can actually take for free and use. But an SVG file, you need to go into Illustrator and just save it off as save it off as an Illustrator, EPS, or PDF. And that way you can use your scalable vector graphics inside of After Effects. And of course they extrude very nicely. Um, I think that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. And again, in the next episodes, we're going to be talking about when is it time to pre-comp and let's see what else. And uh, some more about displacement layers, how exactly they work. Why do we need to put on that little 0.2 displacement on some, on some extrusions and all of that. Again, my name is Ben Griggs. Thank you for watching.